All right, so uh, the, your discussion groups, how did they go? They went well. Quite Good. well. Good, so share with me, with each other. Um, covering more masks. <laughs> okay, that's good. The lies that that have crept in. You know, even you know, even today. You have to talk so, a little louder, honey, because we're not in there. Even today, you know, just something happened today that just opened the light. You know, turned on the light and opened up, tore off a little or unzipped <laughs> something in it. Just. It was overwhelmingly so true that it it affected so many areas of my life, okay. and, and God, you know how I felt about you know God even. Mm -hmm. so that was interesting. Very, very good. Thank you. That is that is good. Yes. Oh, well, how, how gracious God is to yeah. as we go through um, peeling back. Mm -hmm. All those layers that we, he's kind enough as not to do it all at once oh, yeah. because we couldn't handle it. And it kind of related to a storm. Mm -hmm. You know, you get out there and the rain is just pouring, mm -hmm. you know, and you're totally drowned out. Mm -hmm. But if it's just a light sprinkle, mm -hmm. you can handle a light sprinkle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's kind of the way he, he, at least with me, he works things that just reveals a little bit at a time. And as I learn to deal with that, then we'll, we'll tackle something else. Absolutely. But it's like, you know, those walls, don't just poke a hole in it and make a window. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to knock down the whole wall. Absolutely. And that takes time. You're right. And I was going to add that today, so I'm glad you said that. The exact same thing. Uh, that, you know, another reason, I said it's one of the reasons that I gave you. But uh, another reason is just that, because, you know, if we could go in there and uh, by the power of the Spirit, we could knock down a wall very quickly um, and move on to the next wall. The problem is this one would begin to be rebuilt while we're knocking down the, la the next one because we didn't spend enough time with it for it to be a maturing process where we learn why it is we built the wall in the first place, what it was we were protecting ourselves from, learning how to legitimately trust Him genuinely in this area it's a process it takes time and we didn't clean out the debris that's right it down. that's right i mean the reason why that's going to be different when we see him is because our flesh will no longer be fighting us it will be glorified flesh but as long as we are in this current condition with this current bodies um we're going to have opposition and it's going to take time for us to uh to acclimate to new areas of the lordship of jesus christ in our lives um, knocking down a wall and allowing him to work us through it. And like you said, it's little bit by little bit. He gives us revelation, line upon line, precept upon precept. It's not all at once. So. I was going to say something, but I don't know if I should now. Don't say it. Go ahead. That's where trust comes into place. Yes, it does. If you don't trust him, mm -hmm. and you don't hear him, and you don't see him, you, that's not going to make any difference. You're right. The walls. The walls aren't going to come down. You're not going to even try to get yes. the walls. You're that right. was a, a common thing when Terry and I were talking in there. Um, we use more personal examples of things, but um, trust was, kept coming up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Trust was the big thing. You're right. That, that is the thing. When you're dealing with walls in your life, things that you hide behind, the reason why you're hiding is because you're protecting yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, it's easy. I mean, we've got all kinds of walls. Uh, and you get somebody in a, in, a, in, a, in a discussion of something that is intimate, they will backpedal as quick as possible if they don't have trust. Mm -hmm. you know, or they'll turn it into something where it's not personal. You know, any number of things, but it's going to be, that's the way it is. Change the subject quickly. Mm -hmm. It's like, like conversations where you're talking about, you know, basketball and soccer and, mm -hmm. and work and weather and you bring up Jesus, whoa, where'd he go? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's it. I guess that was the end of the conversation. They're over there talking to someone else now about <laughs> basketball again. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, keep it superficial. Keep it on the, mm -hmm. keep it simple. Mm -hmm. I think our group did a lot of talking about you know where the walls came from, mm -hmm. but, you know, going back to our childhoods and mm -hmm. and you know examining you know what caused the walls. Yeah, and that's the beginning of. of how to tear it down, it's finding, right. finding its root. 
<clears throat> You're right. Absolutely. Why, why, you know, why, why there's something happened or why we're afraid of something is because something that happened way back when. That's right. And, um, That's true. and generally, there are things that we had no control yeah. over that happened. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They just happened to us or exactly. around us. Or exactly. But, Our walls don't come out of. Now, I, I'll. Yeah, I, there's two ways of. Uh, there's two. There's two sides of it. The things that come at us are the things that we can't control. Our reaction to it, that's what creates the wall. And we can't control that. Yeah, but as a child, you don't know you're... No, you don't you realize know, it. Realize. <clears throat> no, you don't. So then, then you got, as an adult, you got to go back and go, well, Oh, geez. absolutely. Mm-hmm. I know. You know. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it's, you know, so many years later. <laughs> that wall's got yeah. a good foundation. <laughs> but Satan ahead. is diligent to do his job. Yes, when, he is. When, you know, something that's out of your control happens to you, Satan's right there. It's all your fault. Mm-hmm. You you allowed it to happen. Yeah. You know, you're sure you're only seven, but you could have did something, yeah. you know, or whatever. Just whispering in your ear, making it all your fault, and now you have to build a mask, or, or people are going to find out about it, and they're going to they're going to tear you apart because mm-hmm. it's all your fault. And just mm-hmm. go, Satan will be there. You're right. Satan does his job diligently. Yes, he does. And, you know, and this is a benefit of growing up in a, in a godly home where, where from the very, very young age, there's an understanding that there's someone greater than something greater that we can turn to. That in situations like that, the child already knows they can default turn to the Lord. And they don't wind up building a callus and building a wall initially. But uh, like we said, once the walls are built, it's very, very hard to deconstruct them. It takes time. Yeah, it's not there. Yeah, we tend to think that uh, Satan is telling us all the time that, um, you know, see, it's your fault and stuff like that. But sometimes he lies to us by telling us, oh, there's nothing wrong, nothing happened, mm-hmm. um, you know, this didn't happen, uh, you're, you know, everything was good. And mm-hmm. it's a deception mm-hmm. because that builds up an okay wall mm-hmm. that you can't. You can't see that your reaction to things that happened in the past was a defense mode. Yeah, and you don't realize it. And you don't realize it, mm-hmm. and it's a lie. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's yeah, he has he has three different ways of doing it. He blames us. He lies to us and says that nothing happened, or he tells us to blame it on somebody else. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. They're all three lies. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And different walls come out That's of each exactly. one. Exactly. You had something. Yeah. No. Oh, you didn't. Okay. No, that's in my head. <laughs> what else? We talked about um, perspective. And yeah. That, um, like, the, the, or the, what was it, the protect, or was it the peace? I forgot the wording you put. But what, what you know, the peace, that, what, what was the peace that God is giving or whatever? The rest. The rest. The rest, the rest. Yeah. The, the rest isn't changing the you know, the thing that needs to get done, mm-hmm. it's changing the way you look at it. Mm-hmm. And I said, you know, wa- walking a mile towards hell, every step is going to be heavy and burdened and hard to take a step to, towards it. But, you know, walking a mile towards heaven, every step's going to be like a, a feather. You're going to be able to sprint to it. And I said, you know, the, the mile could be anything. And it's like, um, you know, mom said that she... You know, sometimes she feels like a, a nurse and a maid and, and everything doing things for for dad. I was like, well, it's all your you know, perspective. I'm like, if you feel like you have to do these things for him, then of course it's going to be hard and, and labored. But if you think about it, you get to do these things, then it's going to be happy and joyous. I uh, brought up this morning, I just got done with a nine-hour you know, job, yes. and I got home. And then Stephanie woke up, and after you've been on a forklift for nine hours, mm-hmm. when you sit down, it feels like your feet swell up, and then mm-hmm. when you step on them, it hurts. Yeah. <laughs> but funny. when she woke up, you know, I got up and asked her what she wanted for breakfast, and I made macaroni and cheese. And, <laughs> you know, I, I didn't feel like I had to make her breakfast. Mm-hmm. I got to make her breakfast. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know, even though my feet did hurt mm-hmm. and everything, I, I didn't look at it as a burden. Yeah. It was something I get to do and not something I had to do. Yeah, exactly. So. Perspective is everything. There's mm-hmm. no question about it. <clears throat> but the, the, 
you know, the peace that you know the, of God you know God gives us isn't changing what our scenario we're living in mm-hmm. is changing the way we look at it. Yeah. That's right. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. That's right. Any other input? Come on, guys. You did have groups, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah, our group talks a lot. Huh? Our group talks a lot. Good. <laughs> I don't think I've heard anything about this group in here. What happened in here? Vivian, Mom, Pam. <laughs> it was, it was pretty much the struggle to to know that uh, greater is He that is in me than He that is in the world. When we get to a point, and and I guess I'm, I'm kind of speaking for. Um, Vivian and in her situation right now where she she feels that she's at rest and she's at peace yeah. until Satan blindsides her yeah and I you know to and it's he's so he knows us so much so well to just it's hard not to listen. Yeah. And then to, then we beat ourselves up for listening. And to get back on the track, you know, it, it's, why is it that we know these things? <laughs> we know them. And I, you know, I mentioned that even as far back as when John was here, John and I used to talk about this a lot, you know, why do we get it? I mean, that's, to me, that's a big question. Well, there's, and I guess I'm still there. Yeah. Well, I don't think you're there in every area, dear, but you may be in some. Yeah. Uh, the truth of the matter is that uh, if we really, really get it, we rarely have to relearn it. Yeah, what winds up happening is we get it intellectually, but there's a difference between that and getting it in the heart. Right, exactly. And when we really, really have God, and this is where walls come in, it's real easy to make God, it's Easy if your Christianity is all up here in the head because you've got an answer for everything, and I think that was the way I was most of my life. Well, I can tell you the problems, I deal with the answers. You got five scriptures off the top of that, and uh, and you know, just fix it all up with uh, lawyer talk, and it's no relationship back. That doesn't help anybody. You need an encounter with them, you don't need to hear about them. You know, I mean, any that can anybody can. Speak you know, spew information about God, a, a heathen could do that. That really doesn't fix anything. The issue is you need to have an encounter with them. You know, if you don't have that encounter, then then there's going to be this mental, we built up a mental wall about God, and when the enemy comes and questions it, it's a paper cardboard wall, and it falls down. You know what I mean? There's no, there's nothing there to support it. Whereas if, uh, if we've had an encounter with him, when the, I mean, Jesus used this illustration that revelation knowledge is like a rock that you build your house on. And when the winds do blow against that house, it'll still stand. But if we build it upon sand, which is just information, it's stuff that we learned about him, then when the winds come, it will knock it down. There's no question. And then we'll, then we'll feel bad, and we'll go out there and we'll patch things up, and instead of moving the house back on the rock, we'll just patch it up and... And, you know, and make it look good while it's still on the sand, and then, you know, the whole thing's going to happen all over again. And uh, this is one of the reasons why we, we are meeting in here to talk about intimacy, is because the fact that uh, it's our walls in our life that keep us from having that in personal encounter with God. Uh, you know, I'm not talking about having an encounter with the book. You know, I mean, the, the book is a great book, but it's a book about God. It's not God. Mm-hmm. The Bible was not God. It's just about Him. And, uh, you know, it's intended to be the handshake for the relationship, for the intimacy. And if we don't press through and have that encounter, what we have is religion. Mm-hmm. What we have is, is empty words that make us feel good until there's opposition, and then all of a sudden things fall apart. And uh, that's, that's not healthy. It's also, you know, or it's kind of like the same scenario that we are talking about a minute ago, or a person... Well, and this was, you know, more of our past, we would, you know, deny the opposition and paste the floor and quote our piece of paper, mm-hmm. but we still didn't know it. 
Stuart and have an encounter. And, and, you know, and that will work if you're a baby. But when you grow up, God expects us to put our big boy and big girl pants on. And there needs to be maturity, you know. And maturity requires an encounter with God. So you know, at the very, very beginning, when we first start in our Christianity, God will take the, the cardboard wall as an effort, you know. You, you, at least you went to his word, you know what I mean? But, uh, you know, again, you can't press what Jesus said. His words were so profound talking to the Pharisees who knew God's word. Those guys knew the word of God better than almost any of their other Jewish brethren. They knew God's word. And yet they didn't recognize the Messiah when he came. They had absolutely no clue who he was. They, and they were, Even though he was working miracles in front of them. Because God didn't have their heart because they never had an encounter with God. They had an encounter with a book. And so, you know, Jesus said, you know, you search that book thinking that you're going to have life and it talks about me, and you won't come to me that you might actually have life. Life is an encounter with God, is intimacy with Him. And uh, these, these Pharisees were devoid of that. They had an answer for everything, and they could fix all your problems with 15 points in a poem, but uh, their lives were a mess. And they couldn't even recognize the Messiah when you're sitting right in front of them. So uh, there's a big difference, there's a huge difference. And it requires us to lower our walls, be honest, be vulnerable, and allow God to enter into those areas that we really would rather not let anybody, including God, in. You know? Maybe even especially God. In. <laughs> and, you know, that just is one more proof of it, is that, you know, we know that we have walls even with the Lord, and yet our religious intellect knows that he already knows what's behind that name wall anyway. Yeah, but we still try to oh, hide it. Oh, we still try to hide it. You know, we're, I mean, we're not always necessarily cognizantly aware of it, but that is the net result of what we're doing, you know? So that's how far religion will get you, <laughs> you know? Started it knows he knows, beginning. but uh, still. Mm-hmm. It started from the beginning. Mm-hmm. Adam and Eve ate of the tree. First thing they did, tie some fig leaves together. That's right. God can't see past the fig leaf. Fig That's leaves right. are special. I know. That's all right. You don't know it's mine. Like all religion ever got in me is a rock trying to round my feet, I think is how it is in the song. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. The worst one, too, is not, and not realizing that you have walls. Oh, yeah. That That's right. one of the biggest walls there is. Yes. If you believe you don't have one, your wall is so huge you don't even realize that you're inside. Right. Right. Every human being has them. Right. Every human being has them. So, uh, and, and we will until we finally meet them face to face and they all come coming to the ground. Mm-hmm. Because right now, at best, we're looking through a glass door. Right. <laughs> right. <Some bottles. laughs> yeah. Uh, Any closing thoughts? Yes. Um, I guess I'll have a question. Um, okay, so if a person has so many fig leaves that they're hiding behind that they've got a natural fig tree planted. <laughs> um, and maybe two or three of those fig leaves have fallen off, but how do you get the rest of them to fall off? I mean, I know trusting God and things like that, but... It's my understanding that only confessing to God is not the only thing we have to do, that we have to confess to one another, right? Well, yeah, if you're, if you're talking about sin, then yes. If well, you're talking about things that you hide behind, then that requires, like, there's no sidestepping ever intimacy. And as you press in and have relationship with him, he decides what wall, what fig leaf to work on right now. He's not going to come, and like Nancy said earlier, and knock all of them off the tree at once. Okay. It's going so to take a process. My question is, how do I get all the big leaves to fall off from the tree to die? Um, uh, <laughs> no, to, do, to do that, you will have to wait for his return, <clears throat> and they will instantly fall off the tree. Okay. <laughs> um, the, the answer is seeing him and knowing him as he really is. Okay. And the problem with that is Paul said, you can't do that until you die. Because as long as you're in this flesh, you're only going to know him in part. And God's okay with that. But there, as long as there's progression, you know what I'm saying? He, he just wants you in the game. Like I said earlier with April, you know, you know, she's she's battling something that's very real to her right now. It's a very hard thing. And uh, um, but at least she's still in the game. She's asking questions. She hasn't slammed the door on God. 
So at least she's not hiding behind a fig leaf. She probably still is to some degree and doesn't realize it, or she'd already have her answer. But at least she is, she, you know, when she hears, is going back to the metaphor of the garden, when she hears God call, um, she's not completely hiding. She's at least looking, peeking her eyes out around the bush to see him, you know. There's some interaction. And, uh, and God just wants us to still be in the game. You know, he wants interact. I tell you, he, he loves and desires interaction and, 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 and intimacy with his children. Yeah. He desires that deeply. Yeah, Karen. Um, well, the one phrase that was alluded to um, about come to me and I'll, you know, give you rest was Tozer had said that when we accept ourselves for what we are and cease to pretend, yeah. And that right there gives way for some of those fig leaves to fall. Oh, yes, it does. Because we, we stop worrying about the fig leaves. We stop yeah. holding on tight to them mm-hmm. and let them fall away. Yeah. And um, um, also when I was listening earlier to, some, to refresh for tonight, the phrase came to me that where, are you, where you fear is a sign of where you find your identity. Mm-hmm. And it goes back to the same thing. You know, these things are all, that many times are speaking to our identity. And we don't, we don't want our identity to be shaken. We don't mm-hmm. want it to be um, messed up. Mm-hmm. But that needs to fall away. Yeah. And let our only identity be in what God thinks. <clears throat> exactly. What and he sees. And then those, you know, that's where it all comes back to, the whole being artificial and pretending and pretense and all this stuff, you yeah. know, as well. Mm-hmm. It's got to be about what God thinks. Yeah. I've had, when I was, you know, Terry and I talked about this after church on Sunday. Um, that's one of the things I was just worshiping God about on Sunday during the, our, our service. Was, you know, when I, when I had my, um, when I went into that encounter experience, they had played that one song that we played twice on Sunday, probably three or four times of the weekend. And uh, towards the, I guess it was probably the second day, um, is when I was just set free. Um, and it was in the evening or towards the end of the evening. And uh, they, uh, they played that song again. And when they did, it's essentially like what you just said. You kind of captured it real well, Terry, in that... Uh, one of the things I had been doing all my life is, is protecting myself. And I was largely protecting myself from God. Um, I was terrified of intimacy. Um, mostly because of who I knew myself to be. And um, the entire thing literally just shook me to the ground. And uh, in that moment, it was like I was able to finally understand that I was already very well seen. I knew, my religious mind knew that. But I understood it. And I understood there's nowhere I can run. He already sees me. And he, this whole weekend, he's been pursuing me and telling me that he loves me. And in that moment, I was able to accept, though I was not comfortable, I became comfortable with my lack of comfort, if that makes any sense. Mm. I accepted that I am what I am, and I'm loved anyway. And that makes no intellectual sense to me because it's not just. But it is mercy. It is love. It's something that I don't yet understand fully. And at that moment, my heart was reconciled. I was already born again. I've been born again since I was a child. But I was able to go deeper into and begin a side-by-side walk with the Holy Spirit, which have had, by the way, many breaks, unfortunately, since my encounter. I haven't walked that way since then. I've had good gaps of time where I wasn't and didn't even realize it, you know, because I still have walls too. But in that moment was the first major breakthrough I got. And I became aware that I was fully seen and that I I felt so uncomfortable in that moment because I I wanted to run, but I'm like, where could I run? I don't know. I felt like David, where could I flee from your presence? And why am I feeling a desire to run away from you? I can sense you drawing me, I can sense your acceptance, and it makes me want to run away. And uh, just, I don't know the words to say to, to, to describe it, but just completely just throwing down my resistance, whatever fig leaves I happen to be holding up at the moment, um, 
I experienced the love of God in a way I had never experienced it before. And and largely, I know I have never, ever, since then, come to a place of the kind of questioning I had before. Never. I've had questions crop up here and there. Nothing. Nothing like it was before. Terry can testify to that. I mean, uh, living with me, you have no idea how terrible it was for her. Uh, and I'm not being, I'm not trying to be funny. I'm being serious. I mean, I would go into bouts of depression that could last three weeks to a month and a half um, over my relationship with God, wondering whether I was rejected, wondering with this, wondering with that. And, you know, I'm not the kind of person that has a thought and then forgets about it and might remember it, you know, a day later. Those thoughts stay with me 24 hours a day. I dream them. I think them constantly, which is a real benefit for me when I'm meditating Scripture. When my words that I'm meditating on are the ones of the enemy and doubt, it's destructive. And it creates an environment that is deadly. And that poor woman had to live in that for years. She, you know, she never knew whether I was going to just go into a tailspin and and be that way maybe for a month, a month and a half. I mean, it wasn't like a small thing, you know. And there was nothing that there was no drug that could fix this. This was deep. It had everything to do with connectedness with God. And uh, that was broken that day. Thank you, Jesus. And I think that's the reason why it brings me to tears because I tell you. I I know, I there's no question. If I could have fixed that, it had been fixed a long time ago. It wasn't for a lack of knowing scripture. I knew more scripture than most people my age. I knew more scripture than most people double my age at that time. And I couldn't beat the enemy with scripture. He was beating the snot out of me with scripture. With scripture. <laughs> because he knew I wouldn't accept it otherwise. Right. Man, he was just beating me so bad. And I had no answers. And uh, I was just in a deadly tailspin. Like, you just wouldn't even understand. And uh, um, God, all it took is a moment for God to just make it like it had never been there. That had been there since I was probably 12 years old. I had been battling that for almost, by that point, almost 30 years. And all it takes is a moment. It's astounding. He's that amazing. <laughs> so, you know, but it's it, but it requires intimacy. And it requires just saying, you know what, I'm no longer going to hide. And that's harder than you might think. <laughs> that's all i got to say. It's harder than you might think. And have you been there? And if you don't think you've got walls, then you're more blind than you have possibly any way around. Um, they are there. And uh, they are crippling. God, they're crippling. And they'll keep you acting out of that that big league. 